sorry folks, I'm trying to get back to the right page. <laughs> there we are. Hi everybody, welcome to A Branch of Laurels. My name is Ashaxi, I'm from Ontier, and I interview uh, laurels from around the world uh, about once a week, sometimes more than that. <laughs> and tonight my awesome guest is Pasha from Artemisia. Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. Hello everybody. Super excited to have you. Um, so we usually start these out with um, asking you, what is your SCA origin story? How did you find the SCA and uh, what made you fall in love with it? Well, my SCA origin story actually begins in Ontier. Oh, wow. I attended the University of Oregon. And um, in my freshman year, I got asked out on a date by this very, I thought, attractive young man with really long black hair, kind of rugged, and I was into it. And he asked me to go to dinner with him. And I said, yeah, because I was a freshman in college. You're going to buy me food. I'm going. And so um, I showed up. He had me meet him at this hall. And I was like, what is this? And I was all dressed up. I was like, it's an SCA event. But he oh, no. He failed to tell me that. And he goes, why are you wearing that? We're going to be serving. I said, you asked me out to dinner. What? And I go, mm, I don't think so. And I turned around on my little heel and off I went. And I was like, these SCA people are weirdos. Obviously he was not socially adept. Let's put it that way. Oh, it was cute, but that didn't work enough. So flash forward a few years and I'm in Boise, Idaho, which is where I'm from, which is the barony of Arnhold. And um, I was sitting at a little famous, Boise famous place called Lucky 13. And I was enjoying a refreshing beverage under an umbrella with some people. When I looked over and across the street, I saw my good friend Devo, who is known in, in the society as Baron Armand de Mort. And Devo was wearing medieval looking clothes and he had a dolly that was stacked with cases of beer. And I, being the industrious young lady I was, hustled across the street to see where all that free beer could be going and could I join him. And we'd been friends since we were 15. So I go, hey, Dave, where are you going with all that free beer? <laughs> and that's exactly what I said. And, he, and I said, is this a Shakespeare party? Because Boise has a really uh, vibrant uh, Shakespeare festival and has for decades. And Dave did a lot of theater. So I thought, oh, he's, he's in Shakespeare, right? And he goes, no, no, this is the SCA. And I was like, what? And, and he goes, it's, it's our baronial investiture. And I go, gobbledy googly, what are you talking about? Let me have a beer. And he goes, it's our baronial investiture. It's a big thing and da, da, da. And I go, why are you doing this? And he goes, it's fun. And he goes, you like The Hobbit, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you loved Excalibur, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're gonna like this. And I go, I don't know. And he goes, trust me come to dance practice with me next week. And, and back then dance practice and fighter practice was all in front of BSU uh, on the lawn in front of the Votech building at Boise State University. And he had me meet him there. So I show up and there was dancing, which was fun because it was kind of like a big square dance as far as I was concerned. I was like, I like to dance. And yeah, and um, also, I failed to mention that when I ran across the street, there was also my good friend, Cammy, who is uh, Mistress Agnes of Whitby. You interviewed uh, Agnes, who is an uber amazing Laurel. And I will talk more about Agnes. Um, and I had also known Agnes since we were in high school, since we were, you know, gator tots basically. And, so I'm like, okay, well, here are two of the coolest people I know, and they're doing this thing. And I really liked Excalibur and I like the Hobbit. So I'm going to show. So I showed up at the dance practice and I'm hanging out with them and it all seems pretty okay. And I'm like, 
this seems kind of cool. We're just kind of hanging out and we're square dancing and I like that, all right, I'm easy. And then I see a green Volkswagen van drive up. Tall, skinny, redheaded dude steps out now. I went to University of Oregon. Green Volkswagen van is for me like a ooh, 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 ooh. hot guy, hot guy, hot guy, hot guy. <laughs> and I was like tall, redheaded dudes. Walks around the corner and I was like, hi. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> it's a little awkward. <laughs> Who are you? And I was like, my name's Kelly. He was like, what's your SCA name? And I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, it was so strange. And, and that is basically how it all got going. Long story short, I ended up dating that dude and we've been married for 27 years. It'll be 28 years in July. And we were together for three years before that. So this year, this July is our 30th, really. Wow. So, uh, yeah, little little did I know, sitting on that lawn, seeing that van pull up, that I was going to marry him. But I sure did. And um, uh, yeah, and 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 that is really I, my 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 beginnings weren't academic. They weren't based on my love of the Middle Ages or anything like that. I was just looking for a party, and I liked Hobbits and Excalibur, and I. Like that horrible but fabulous movie *Night Rider*, starring the great Ed Harris. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> and I do own it on DVD, and I do watch it. <laughs> yeah, we we watched that uh, a couple months back, and it was really hard to get through. <laughs> I love it so much. It's so terrible. It's so terrible. It's so terrible as fabulous. Oh my goodness! Wow. So, um, you ended up doing Bardic in the SCA. What, how did that come about? Well, mundanely, I am a professional jazz and blues musician. And um, so I, I've been a singer. I think the first time I sang in public, I was three or four. Wow. And uh, I grew up like a lot of people do singing in church and uh, doing volunteer stuff where I had to go sing at um, VA homes, <laughs> senior citizen homes and stuff like that, which was great. They were lovely to me. Don't get me wrong, but it was, you know, I, it, it's good to get your chops in, you know, you, you're like, I'd sing and people would come up and go, you're too loud for my hearing aid. And I'd be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So I was a singer already and I'd been in a lot of bands and that kind of thing. And um, Arnhold, when I started in the SA was a very interesting place because like I said, the very first time I discovered it was the day it was invested as a barony. And um, there were no peers. Um, Everybody was a really, young player, or I think they actually had investiture maybe made two or three peers, recognized two or three peers, but, but Arnold was a lot of young people who didn't really, Artemisia, especially Arnold, Boise was pretty far removed from Aitenvelt and Loch Solon, which is Salt Lake, um, and uh, there wasn't as much coming and going as there, as there is now, certainly. Um, there was no internet, so that exchange wasn't happening. And um, so it was really a fly by the seat of your pants kind of deal. And um, I never even saw a known world handbook until I'd played for two years. And, and I'd been to a few events and, and you start catching on, but we, we had no idea. And I, and I can remember, I asked my friend Scruffy, Master Aldwin Longwalker, um, how do you get to be this laurel thingy? What's this laurel thing? And, and he said, it's essentially having a master's degree in the arts in an SCA related field. And I was like, cool, I sing, I, I got it. <laughs> awesome, I mean, I, I mean, that was kind of my, my thought. I was like, this is not a big deal. 
And I made every possible mistake a new person could make in the beginning. My first event, I showed up wearing, I just said dress kind of medieval. I was like, okay. So I wore a big tiara and I had some gold chains and I wore a white belt over the most hideous peak kind of linen. Agnes gave it to me. It was in the trunk of her car. And she was like, just make a tea tunic out of this. And I go, what's that? She goes, it's like a giant t-shirt. I was like, but my mom make it. I was like, mom, make me this t-shirt thing. And she's like, okay. And I belted it with a white belt. And I was like, princess. <laughs> yeah. There were some people there that were like, you're not allowed to wear that. You're not allowed to wear that. So what I ended up with was just this big pink t-shirt because they made me take everything off. And I was like, this wasn't my plan, but you know, and, and the first out of, out of area event I, I went to, my husband fights and there was a, a battle. It was an event called Harvest War that's outside of Logan, Utah. Beautiful, beautiful place. I, I highly encourage anyone to go to that event if they like to camp and you see the Northern Lights sometimes and it's just oh, so beautiful. And they do such a wonderful job. And um, I've been going to it for a long time. And so I'm standing on the field and there's this lady standing next to me and um, we're both watching the fighting and my boyfriend's out there fighting. This is really the first time I've seen a melee. I didn't really know without, I just seen fighter practice. And I was like, whoa. And so I, I take a look at her and she has a, a crown, not a coronet, a crown on her head. And I go, hey, how'd you get that? Because <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I had no idea how to play. And she went, I'm queen. And I go, right on. How do you get to be queen? So she knew right away I had no clue. She said, well, there's a crown tournament. And, uh, you know, the person who wins the tournament becomes the crown. And then the person they're fighting for becomes their consort. And I said, oh, I said, well, who's fighting for you? And she goes, that guy right there. And right then at the most inopportune moment, King took a spear hit in a very unfortunate spot. <laughs> the timing was perfect. And I looked at her and I go, so much for tonight. <laughs> I was, I, I had, I had zero idea how to play. I was extremely irreverent. I was like, I didn't know to bow to her. I, I had no clue, no clue. And, um, you know, um, why can't I think of their names all of a sudden? Oh, Gunnar and, and Gabrielle. Legendary on tier. Yeah. Right? So we go up to an event called Honor War that was up in northern Idaho, kind of right, right on the border. And I got up really early in the morning to take a shower. And I'm in the shower, and it was a shower house. It was really nice for camping. It was like a Boy Scout camp. It was great. And um, I'm in there taking a shower and this guy comes walking in wearing a heraldic tabard, which I had, I had no idea what that meant. And he goes, you're going to have to hurry. The crown would like to use the shower. And I was like, I looked over the door and I go, get your butt out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and I go, get out, get out. <laughs> so modest. And I was like, you're freaking me out. So he left and then she walks in and she goes, excuse me. And I like peeked over the door and she goes, um, we need to get to court. Are you going to be long? And I go, is that guy coming back? And she goes, no, no. And I go, okay. And so I hurried for them. I didn't really understand what they meant. And then he walked in with her, right? To go take a shower and he's very young. And I go, you're going to go in there together? And he looked at me and he goes, and I go, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on, but I'm out of here. <laughs> little did I know, little did I know. So yeah, they were, he was lovely to me. And, and the rest of the event, he would point things out to me. He realized people were great. And, and once I realized that I had zero understanding of what was happening, and I was just there to like 
hang out and party and wear like counterculture clothes as far as I was concerned, people gently clued me in. So it took a minute, quite a minute, a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more than a couple. <laughs> to be fair, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you mentioned Devo and Agnes and Scruffy. Were they sort of your um, major uh, kind of mentors when you first started out? Um, absolutely. Um, uh, Scruffy had played in the SCA for a long time. He actually was a member of House Starfire and he had played uh, in Alaska, where, uh, where I should say, and um, he had been in the Air Force. And then uh, somehow he, he wound up in, in Arnhold, and I'm not quite sure exactly what route that took, how he got there, but he knew a lot about the SCA. He, he was a great court herald. He was wonderful in court. And if you're ever in Arnhold and you're in court and, you, and, and at the end of the court, you know, a lot of times they'll go vivat or huzzah, right? Depending on what kingdom you're from. Um, you might notice in Artemisia every once in a while, people will raise their hand and go, joyous noise, joyous noise. That's because of Scruff, because that's what Scruff always did. So that's always our little homage to Scruff. It's always like fond remembrance. We got you. Joyous. Because <laughs> at the end of every, he was very, he was very puffy when he was a herald. Very puffy. He was great though. And he would go, joyous noise, joyous noise. And, and you know, so yeah, so we all, we all kind of do that as a little tip of the hat, sir. That's, that's really cool. When uh, Rifkin and I first started out, um, he was living on Avalok and Lorwyn's couch yeah. in West Seattle. <laughs> and uh, he taught us a lot as well. Uh, we didn't understand that he was um, kind of an important person in the SCA, though. He was just this guy that was always in, <laughs> sleeping on the couch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, anyway. But he gave my sister and I our SCA names. Aww. Yes. And um, he, uh, he designed our arms. And I have singing arms because of, of, of Scruff, which I love. And um, he, uh, yeah, there were, there were certain times that he definitely steered us away from making massive errors. <laughs> and um, his explanation of how everything worked wasn't always 100% accurate, but fair enough, fair enough. And he totally taught me how to court herald, completely. Like, I totally, I love to court herald. And I, I feel like I'm a really competent court herald. And, and I totally lay that at Scruff's feet. So for those of you I've heralded for, if you didn't like it, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to uh, be a court herald, but I've never uh, gotten over all the fears that are surrounded by about, about doing it. So I need to do that someday. Nerve wracking. Yeah. And sometimes you got to think on your feet because sometimes everything goes wrong. It's like, okay, well, got a punt. Here we go. And I get nervous giggles and like, I can't stop laughing. And uh, people like that though. Oh man. <laughs> Woo. Um, so what was your first experience um, actually singing at an SCA event? How did you transition into that? Okay, this is a bad story. You're asking me bad questions. <laughs> you can always say, I'm not gonna answer that one. I have my bad laurel mug, so. The reason I didn't get my laurel right away. Anyway, um, so we were at this event and there was a bardic and I was with Armand and there was a prize and I am very competitive. I love to play games and I love to win and I'm a poor sport. So I try not to play games with people that will not excuse my bad behavior because I feel bad that I'm a poor sport. Anyway. But not bad enough to not be a poor sport. No, I'm going to, I'm going to win. So 
no, no. I've made my sister throw risk boards across the room. I, I'm, I'm awful. So I, I'm a bad winner too. I'm like, now you lost, you're a loser. I'm terrible. I'm very immature when it comes to gameplay. And I try, I, so I try not to engage. I find that's best now. But they were having this Bardic competition and um, they wanted people to get up and sing. And it was two laurels from Lock Solin that were sponsoring it. And I said to Armand, uh, do I need to know a period song? And he goes, just make something up. And I was like, all right. So I stood up, it wasn't a total lie, kind of. And I said, this song was written by Christopher Marlowe. And I sang, if any of you ever seen this movie, and I'm like I said, I love movies. I'm a real movie buff, and I love old movies. A saga of terror and drug use and clothing and fabulousness from the 60s, written by Jacqueline Suzanne, The Valley of the Dolls. Yes, I sang the lounge song, Come Live With Me and Be My Love, and we will all the pleasures prove which is, it's, it's a come live with me and be my love. It's so cheesy. It's like slice me up some cheddar baby. And I sing it and I sing it like that. I was like, da, 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 the whole thing. It's like, I looked at Armand and I go, yeah, <laughs> oh, 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 you know. And they, came, they let me pick my prize. So what did I pick? I picked some carpet trim. <laughs> it's this brown and white and turquoise variegated velour or chenille carpet trim, like upholstery trim. I have kept it all these years. It is in my trim basket to remind me of what a massive a-hole I was and how bad I was at picking out a prize. There were some good things and I took I was like, I don't know what to take. I just wanted to win. Carpet trim. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was my first entree vocally into the society. A very elegant and winsome performance. Super classy. Super classy. Super classy. Um, but uh, I actually heard a... Uh, uh, some bards at some other events and I heard them uh, singing at the time filk was really predominant and I heard them singing filk songs and I was like well I can do that like I got that down and um, that was kind of how it started for me and then I started uh trying to find out more and more and more about period music. I had been in a lot of choirs, lots. And I'd, I'd been in several madrigal choirs. So I had some background, um, but, but nothing, no expertise, no, none. And um, so I tried to seek out as much SCA music as I could find and as much uh, period music as I could get my hands on. Um, the event that I was talking about uh, up uh, Honor War, I was able to get my hands on what is apparently now a rare copy of the On Tier Songbook, which I certainly still own. And by the way, I do share my music. So if there's anybody watching, uh, you don't have to be my apprentice or my student. I will gladly share what I have, just in case somebody wants something out of there. Um, I didn't know it was rare. I just would grab any kind of songbook, anything I could get my hands on. And um, then there was a BOD meeting in uh, Loch Solon, and I met Master Iosef of Loxley, who was uh, the premier bard of Aitenbelt, going back, like, I think to the beginning. Um, and uh, he was a very unusual, and um, uh, eccentric man. And uh, he was extremely kind to me. And 
he gave me permission and gave me copies of all of his music. Wow. And I had volumes and volumes. He was a computer guy before people were computer people. And I, I literally have five massive binders along with floppy disks that my husband tried to convert for me. Um, and uh, not to record because it's his music and he had his, he's sadly passed away. Um, but uh, that was really the first Bardic Laurel that I met. And I, uh, I met him at this BOD meeting and then I got to uh, really hang out with him at an Estrella, my first Estrella. And he started showing me music and, and kind of giving me uh, an idea of how to go. And, and for me, the challenge was really, I have a big voice. Um, I grew up singing in church, so I sang a lot of gospel music. I grew up singing a lot of blues and a lot of jazz. So I have a really big voice. I'm, I have a loud voice and stylistically, I'm very rhythm and blues, soul singer. That's my jam. So, Singing period, I, I did have operatic training, um, but singing period music, um, I had a really difficult time trying to combine my style with period music. It was a, a super difficult challenge for me because I wanted to try to make everything sound like a 12 bar blues, I, you know, and you kind of can. Um, <laughs> but, that's not period. Um, uh, and um, so I went through so many libraries and texts and I just lived going through folk music, but it was hard to find period music. And uh, I was a manager at Barnes and Noble and I came across this book uh, that somebody had returned that was a special order, very expensive, very expensive. But because it was a special order, we couldn't return it back to the publisher. So if we wanted it, we could have it for 20 bucks. And it was called Elizabethan Broadside Ballads. And it's a, a scholarly work um, where someone did their dissertation. And I looked at that and I was like, what's that? And that book changed everything for me. I, I found that I could still sing uh, broadside ballads, not even so much body songs, although some, sure, but, but uh, I, could, I could match my vocal, my personal vocal style to the broadside ballads and make a sound that I thought was good and was appropriate. And I started studying more and more about them. And that's when I started really teaching classes about them, which no one attended. <laughs> I, would, I would be all so excited and I'd be like, Elizabethan Broadside Ballads by Pasha Starley Mayfair, please come and attend this class. And I'd sit there and I'd be like, Aww. no, really, it happened over and over and over again. And I realized at that time, um, first of all, there, there weren't any bardic <laughs> that lived in the kingdom. And uh, I turned all the sound off on my phone. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I totally jumped though. <laughs> okay. Quit messaging me. <laughs> my daughter and my sister. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> I can't turn the sound off. Stop it. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh my God. All right. Anyway. <laughs> So um, I, uh, I came to 30 year in Vancouver. Were you there? I was, it was my first event. We were at the same event. We were. So I had been trying really hard to do period stuff because I'd sung a lot of body stuff and a lot of naughty stuff at parties. I'm good on the fly. I can make stuff up. And um, so, so I'd been doing plenty of that. But I was trying to be serious. I was like, okay, I need to like, in, I want to master this. this. This is now becoming a real challenge for me. And I'm really loving what I'm learning about. This is, this is 
exciting to me and new. I didn't even know this world of music existed. Wow. A lot of times uh, music teachers, when you're in school, will just pass it off as folk music. And folk could mean an Appalachian, you know, uh, folk song or something from, you know, 17 or 1800s. You, you, there's never any uh, real understanding of where that's coming from or the history of it, who wrote it, why, what events surround it, et cetera. And um, so I was starting to do that. And then in sweeps an angel that called attention to what I was doing and made other people turn around and go, oh, when you're a vocalist or an instrumentalist and you're performing for a crowd, and, and I, because I've done this professionally for so long, um, most of the time people think of you as background music. You know, you go to a restaurant and somebody's singing, everybody's not like, you don't think you're like at Prince, right? <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna cut my steak, isn't that pleasant? You know, I mean, and, that, and that's kind of how it goes. So I showed up at this Laurel's Prize tourney and I had all my documentation and I was singing my little heart out. And there's other people that have all their stuff set up and I see Laurel stop and talk to them and Laurel stop, no one stops. Everybody keeps walking past me and I'm singing and I'm singing and I'm trying hard to sing. And who walks up but Laurel and, and holds her hand up and goes, everyone, listen. <laughs> and she gave me like, I think she might've given me a pencil. I think like my, I got like a little pencil token. It still gets me because I was trying so hard and she was the only one who noticed that I wasn't ambiance. And from then on, things started to change for me. And uh, I mean, she's a goddess anyway. I mean, if, if we wanted to talk for two hours about Laurel and I would gladly do so because she's so amazing. So amazing. Same. Um, I know everybody says that about her because it's true. And um, anyway, so she, I really credit with her with getting other people to actually notice that I wasn't just uh, providing entertainment, that I was actually doing work and that I actually had an art that I was like working on and a scholarly pursuit that I was working on. And it, that, that meant a huge lot to me and made a big difference in my, my path. So. Thanks, Laurel. <laughs> so did you ever end up apprenticing to somebody? Did you have somebody who, who kind of took you by the hand and, and represented you at all? Yes and no. Um, I was apprenticed. Um, this is a awkward story. I was apprenticed to Viscountess Yvonne Doucette de la, I can never say her name. Yvonne Doucette de la Roulin. Um, she was Princess of Drakenwald. She was an Elizabethan costume in Laurel. She was insanely talented. And she was uh, married to my husband's knight, Sir Yoshida Atai. And um, my husband had been squired to Yosh, uh, gosh, back when, before he ever moved to Boise. He's originally from North Shield. He's from Fargo, North Dakota. And um, don't you know? And um, so he, uh, he had squired to Yosh and Yosh's Air Force, and so is my husband. And um, then Yosh had, had ended up getting a transfer to Ohio, and my husband was working in Idaho. And um, we, weren't, we weren't married yet, but uh, my husband, Eric, his, his name is Eric the Rabbit, the Honorable Lord Eric the Rabbit, affectionately known as Bunny. So Bunny was back in um, uh, Ohio working, he was on a deployment there working on some planes. He's an aircraft inspector. And uh, I was going to fly out and then drive home with him and meet the family. 
you know, the big family meeting in North Dakota. Anyway, not SCA and let's not. So um, I show up and he's staying with uh, Yosh and Marianne who both lived in Dayton and he's staying with them. And Marianne, Marianne and I got along great. And she said, I should apprentice you. And I go, what's that? <laughs> and she goes, I make you my apprentice and you know, I help you on your path to a laurel. And I go, cool. <laughs> Let's do this. In my SCA career. So she apprenticed me. Then I come back home and there was no internet. We never communicated. Um, so I had this green belt. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it was supposed to do. And I think that made my, I had a difficult journey to getting my laurel. And I think that that was part of the reason, and I don't blame her. I just think that uh, the laurels of my kingdom, who at that high time didn't have a way of checking up to see, am I really apprenticed to somebody? Is this legit? Like, whatever, you know, I mean, but I felt like I wasn't supposed to take that green belt off. I felt like I would get in trouble or something. I didn't know. I didn't understand what that relationship was supposed to be at all. I really had no idea. And years later, I ran into her at Penzik after I'd already gotten my laurel. And she said, did being apprentice to me help at all? And I went, honestly, no. <laughs> I, said, I said, it did not. I said, I think it actually probably did the opposite. I said, but you know what? It's okay. I said, well, it's well, it ends well. And I said, you know, I said, we were impetuous youth. And she said, well, that's probably true. And I said, we had a lot of wine, so don't worry about it. <laughs> How did that affect um, you taking on students once you got laurels? I've only ever had one apprentice. And um, he was a handful. <laughs> oh, yes, he was. And he is an amazing peer and has far outshone me he's so great so great such a wonderful human such a wonderful peer such a wonderful sca player um he's amazing and i have some pictures of him in my slideshow um and uh he was uh, having him as my apprentice was a great experience for me but i have a really complicated view of taking apprentices now that it's been a few years for one thing, what I do is fairly specific. So when I encounter other musicians and bards that, that want help with music, I give it freely. You don't have to be in a relationship with me. I don't, I don't care. I'm, I want to help you. If you want that stuff, I got it. And um, a lot of people feel like it's really necessary to take a student and turn them into a, you know, develop it into a, an apprentice relationship. I would do that with the right relationship, but I feel like my door is open. My books are open. My research is open. You don't have to have a special relationship with me. Treat me with respect. Be kind to me. I would like to do that with you. And that's, where I come from on that. I see a lot of people, and maybe it was because of my own experience, gobble up new people really fast. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like that. I'm like, look, let them, let them do like the dumb stuff like I did. Let them, let, those things for me are fun now. I, I had a, I had a wonderful time. It was, my, the SCA was a playground for me. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I made lifelong friends and family and you know, I had no idea what this lark would turn into and how much I would learn, I, 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 how much it would grow my brain. And I just feel like new people should have a chance to screw up and test stuff out without somebody being like mother hen or, or father hen over them. Just, just let them do their thing. And if you can give them a hand, give them a little, hey, 
you know maybe yeah. you want to put just saying like it's like you know i mean i mean you know help a brother or a sister out i'm i'm all for that but unless unless i had a real relationship with somebody who i feel like had played for at least at least 2 maybe 3 years i don't think that i would feel comfortable formalizing a situation and locking them into something that i don't think they would understand yeah yeah but that just, i know other people feel differently and i respect that it's just my own my own stuff I think that's totally legit. I think that um, in, I think before anybody embarks on a peer relationship like that, they need to know, they need to know enough to be able to define what that relationship is going to mean to them. Yeah. And um, I think as peers, you know, if I see someone doing good work, I'm going to support them and I'm going to promote them. Exactly. You know, all you have to do is know me <laughs> in order for me to be in your corner, right? And I feel the same way. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, so I just feel like I kind of have an open door policy and especially in the last few years, I've lived in a lot of different kingdoms and um, they're all different, very different and how they go, how, how peers act, how they go about things very different than what I'm used to. And so I just kind of sit back and take it in and, and go, okay that's that's different than what i do and that's interesting and how do you guys do that and how do you do that and that's cool and okay I, so i just try to absorb as much i i feel like a, a nomad right now because <laughs> currently i'm living in san antonio in the barony of bjornsborg um but uh uh i haven't really met anybody a little bit online uh, Lord Robin Carrot, who is an amazing bard, and shout out if you're watching this, Robin Carrot, because you are fabulous. You send me to the best neighborhoods for the best brunch, and your garb is on point. <laughs> I'm just saying, fabulous, fabulous. But anyway, personal opinion, lovely, lovely human. So, but I haven't gotten to meet anybody in person because COVID. Yeah, you know, and you moved, you moved there during uh, in the last year. I moved back last May and it was horrible. And I moved from New Orleans and I love, love, love it there so much. And I have some really good friends there and I really want to go back. And uh, so I hope that happens in the next few months that fingers crossed. But you know, I'm starting to get to know San Antonio and who knows, maybe, maybe in six months I'll be like, now nah, I'm a Texan. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> I'm pretty open, so you know I like cowboy boots, and I have a few pair. So oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Is there anything in the kingdoms that you've lived in that you would want to take home and adapt into um, your home council? Well, I haven't gotten to sit in Anne Stewart's circle, so I don't know how they work. So. Um, I couldn't tell you uh, how that rolls here. Um, they've been very nice to me online, but I, you know, I don't, I don't know anybody, any candidate, nothing. So I, I opted out of sitting in circle because I didn't think that was appropriate. I, I don't know anyone. Um, in uh, uh, Glen Aubin, I appreciate uh, the Southern hospitality of my brothers and sisters of the Laurel, how they are always willing to host with a, an appropriate libation when you enter circle. And um, I, I do like their conversations that they speak to each other both, it, it, it was interesting. I, and, and maybe that isn't even a Glen Auburn thing so much as a, a cultural Southern thing but they're both more formal and more familiar than Westerners. It's very interesting. I, I, like, I like the way that they, they speak with each other. I find it, it's like, it's kind of like family. Mm -hmm. Whereas I find our circles in Artemisia tend to be a little more formal. And I don't mind that either. I'm, I mean, I'm comfortable with that because that's what I've grown up with, but, but yeah, the, 
very, very relaxed and easy, but they're serious about what they're talking about, you know, the, but, but yeah, that they might be discussing, you know, uh, I don't know, um, how to craft, like how, how to properly, uh, uh, I don't know, craft a, a Byzantine <clears throat> coat, cast the right, you know, doodads to go with it and everything. I'm not a costuming model, don't hate me. And all that stuff. But at the same time, they'll be like leaning back on the floor with their feet crossed going, yeah, you know, when I was casting that out of pewter, this is kind of how that went. And I've been watching so-and-so do it. And I have to say, and I was like, do you know? And it, but, but I mean, very serious. And they knew what they were talking about, but it was just this laid back thing but they knew their stuff. And I was like, I like you guys. Cool. So, um, and I don't know if I would, I, I would not change Artemisia. I love Artemisia. It, the only thing I might change is to help some laurels. Okay, I'm coming for you. I'm coming. <laughs> Get a little bit more internet savvy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. I think um, one of the things that COVID has done for our council is we had a few holdouts who were very much against doing anything online and um, they know how to do the stuff now. <laughs> there aren't any more excuses, which is awesome. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, what am I going to do? You can be really lonely or you can hop on board and they've all hopped on board. So I think it's good. That's one of the positive things that have come out. So shall we look at your photos? Yes, let's do slideshows. Okay. I love talking about people I love. Okay, uh, you are looking at um, Armand de Mort and Agnes of Whitby, uh, Baron, Baroness, Laurel, Laurel, fabulous, the best people in the world, and uh, just totally my entree into the SCA. And this next picture is um, a, a close-up of Agnes, who you got to interview. She is the most amazing, talented, crazy creative human being I know. And she's been my rock through COVID, hanging out with me late at night on vent playing World of Warcraft and talking about adventures. And I heart her so much. And if you ever get a chance to take a class from her, take it. Because she is one of those people that is, I always think of some people as uber laurels. That's an uber laurel right there. That's, that's an uber laurel and, and she knows her stuff and she's, you, you'd be lucky if you got to take a class with her. That's a, that's a true master. That's a true master of their craft. There aren't that many. I am super excited to spend some time with her when, uh, when we can do that. Wonderful. And there is um, Baron Armand. And I also believe my brother-in-law is standing behind him. <laughs> looks about 15 <laughs> yeah that's that's been a minute um and uh uh armand was the uh, uh baron of arnhold and um i believe i'm correct somebody can correct me if they want but i'm pretty sure he was the first openly gay baron in the sca a land baron and um he uh he was my best friend. And I don't know anyone who knew Armand that just didn't love him to bits. He, he was funny and naughty and smart and talented and cool and nice. And everybody just loved him. And I don't know how he became my best friend. I, I was just the luckiest of humans to uh, have his friendship. And so I miss the fact, and the fact that you managed to have two friends from high school 
I know. It's just so fantastic. It's so weird too, because we're all like little punk rock kids. This is not, you would not think, but here you go. <laughs> And um, Armand passed in April of 2016. And uh, gosh, dang it, I miss him. He, he was my buddy. He was the best man at my wedding. He lived with me. He, he was my brother. And I mean that. And dang, I miss him. Dang, I miss him. <laughs> so good. He was so dang good. OK. And I, of course, I put this picture right after Dave. Good thinking, dummy. <laughs> uh, this is Master Aldwin Longwalker, affectionately known as Scruffy. I know that shocks his Atlantean family, but deal. And um, he is—he uh, uh, is—he has been gone for a while now. He was uh, definitely my my early guide in the SCA, and. Um, uh, the last time I got to see him, it was, uh, it was evening, it was Pensick, we were standing at the top of the hill, a mist had fallen over Cooper's Lake, and I was standing there with him, and I hadn't seen him in a long time because he had moved back to uh, the East Coast. And um, I had managed to make it out to Penzik, which everyone should do at some point in their lives. And he put his arm around me and he said, this is why we play. Look at the dream, look at the mist. Aww. And he hugged me and I walked down the hill and that was the last time I saw him. And I sure miss him. Dang. They both, they both were super special people to me. So, oh, okay, this was my early girl crew and you can see my unfortunate picture. I'm wearing the sunglasses, of course, like all good SCA people should always be wearing sunglasses with their garb. We're in something crazy, by the way. And, oh my gosh, what do I have on? My giant apprentice belt. <laughs> and um, there are some amazing people in this picture including my sister, who I will point out, Garb Laurel also has sunglasses on. And just out there, sissy. And um, uh, Louise DeBeck, who I believe you're interviewing soon. And uh, the girl in armor is my pal, Andy, whose name is Fravis. And she actually now lives in New Orleans and, and is my uh, uh, current partner in crime. A lot of the time, uh, we spend a lot of time together in the barony of Axmore, and I'm trying to get her to come back and play in the SCA. She's she's fabulous, but everyone in that photo is great, and I love them all. And that was, I think, I want to say that was my first or second Raptor War. So that's a big event in in uh, Arnhold. And the next picture are my three compadres, the the terrible trio. Uh, Agnes, Armand, and of course my baby sister, uh, and that would be uh, Duchess Cortland Sterling Mayfair, not to be confused with Starling Mayfair. Um, and uh, yeah, um, that is also in front of uh, Duke Conrad's tent. And I will just let you know that he ordered it from Great, Great Britain and the poles are made from wood from Sherwood Forest. Very important. <laughs> wow, that's pretty special. I know, I love it. <laughs> oh, this demure little flower is my baby sister, uh, Duchess Cortland. She was very reluctant to join the SCA. She kept saying it was a cult. <laughs> and she didn't want anything to do with it. And and. Uh, a girlfriend of hers was going to go to an event with me um, because my husband was military. He was deployed a lot. And in fact, he was deployed 14 times in the last, well, since we've been married. Wow. A lot. A lot. So, so we, he missed a lot of, of this SCA stuff. But uh, anyway, so I told my sister, you have to go because your friend bagged on me. And she went and that was it. 
sucked right in. But what is the deal with little sisters who don't really want to join the SCA and then they do and they become like crazy successful in the SCA? What is that? That's just Laurel Pelican. Good for you. <laughs> she's so good. She's so good at the SCA. And and she's wonderful. She she uh, she's an amazing queen, truly. And and a really, really good baroness. And uh, my gosh, can she sew like a bandit? She, she, she's, she is crazy, but she can do everything and always has been able to. I could always sing, but she could always like, oh, here's a pottery project. Here's a painting project. Here's a sewing project. Here's a sculpture product. And I'm just like, and then her stuff would be on display like by the school board and stuff like that. And I'd be like, I did a painting. And my mom would go, that's cute, honey. <laughs> Like, she's I, also an incredible community builder. She makes uh, people feel very welcome and comfortable. She does. She does. She she has a heart of gold, and uh, she's a very good sister. And um, we're, we're really close. That's awesome. Not that's about her. And she got me to wear fake eyelashes, so that's a big that's a big accomplishment too. And back in shock, that's where you got. Them. <laughs> Really? <laughs> it's not where I got them, but you know, she's why. Okay. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hmm. It figured you try to be the, the showstopper. <laughs> Let's see if I can re boot it and have it work. Dun, 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 yay! And there's another one of my sister and my wonderful brother-in-law, Duke Conrad von Crixen, who is the most stellar fighter, uh, the best man. He's such a good person and um, amazing to put up with my sister and I because we are loud and we fight with each other, but only with each other. Nobody better jump in or we'll turn on them like vicious chihuahuas. And, um, and, and, and he is such a quiet man, he really is. Very, very quiet, very reserved. And it's so funny, Why dry sense of humor, so funny. And uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the time he's just like, okay. <laughs> But but he he's great, and uh, if you've ever gotten to see him fight, he's brilliant. He's, he's one of the best fighters in the SCA, and um, he's a great king as well, and a great knight. So I, I am biased, but I don't care. It's true. And he's a pretty good Laurel. Oh, he's taught me some stuff. He, he's great. He's really smart. Yeah. Ah, this is my former apprentice, who I always still refer to as my apprentice, His Excellency Carl Braden von, I can never say his last name. Don't kill me, Brad, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it, Silberheim, Silberheim, Silberheim. I didn't take German in school, I took French. Anyway, so <laughs> he is a Laurel and a Pelican. He is a landed Baron. Uh, he is an amazing court herald and being able to uh, be his Laurel was really one of the greatest SCA experiences I've ever had. I could not have asked for a, a better person to teach me while I was trying to help him. And uh, I, I, I we're still close and he, he's, he's just wonderful. Do you know him? We, I, I think that we, well, I, I, I was there for um, his apprentice's laureling, right? Oh, oh, of course, Sarah. So Yeah, so we sort of circled around each other. <laughs> I think of Sarah as like my little baby. Uh, she's, she, is she so beautiful or what? What the heck? Yeah, yeah. What is Sarah? I look at her and I'm like, stop it. You're like a 
if I was going to make calendars, <laughs> girls of SCA people, I'd just make them all of Sarah in all her little German clothes and be like, look who's so pretty. <laughs> ah, okay, here's me actually court heralding. I realize, let me just say to anybody who's watching, if anybody is watching, <laughs> um, I don't have very many photos of myself because I don't like my picture taken. I just really, I never have. So I had to pick and choose, but I, I was the court herald for uh, Conrad and Cortland, both of their reigns, as well as uh, baronial herald for them when they were Baron and Baroness of Arnhold. I was also baronial herald for Armand when he was Baron of Arnhold. I love court heraldry and uh, I, I just, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I if, if, if uh, Conrad were to fight in crown and win again, you'd have to fight me not to fly back and be their court herald and I'd beat you. So I, 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 I loved it. I loved it. It was so much fun. And I would like to do more of it. I, I just, I love it. Awesome. I kind of look like the flying nun there though, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this is kind of where my life took a big turn. Here is my husband, um, the Honorable Lord Eric the Rabbit. And he is escorting my moon and stars the most perfect human being on the planet, in my humble opinion, uh, my daughter up to get her first baronial award. And um, her SCA name is Inga, Eric's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was really great that he got to escort her up. And the next picture is her actually kneeling and getting her award. And you can see Eric uh, kneeling in the back behind her. And she, you look at her face, she is terrified. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know what you guys want, but my dad's right behind me. Hey. <laughs> we had some very good friends on the throne uh, who I have been sewing for and they wanted to give my son a uh, like a little kids award that they that, that the town does here and they called him up and I tried to walk him up and he ran out of the building oh my god he wouldn't do it he was like fuck no I'm out oh my god. that's so funny so uh he does not like to be surprised plays but uh she was raised in the SCA and um, she's very busy right now. She's trying to get into grad school and she's, she's a busy girl. And there are more pictures of her coming up because honestly, if I could have sent you a hundred pictures of nothing but Sophia and Lily, that would have been it. And I could spend all the time talking about them and I would be completely content. And oh, what a shock. Here are Sophia and Lily. And I don't know the other people in that picture, but. <laughs> Some randos. <laughs> uh, Lily is uh, my niece, and of course my daughter is up front. And you'll note that my sister, Her Grace Cortland, made them all matching clothes. How nice of her to make my daughter matching clothes to match her family. But where's Pasha's matching outfit? But I have so many of my sister's clothes. <laughs> I'm always, she'll say, I can't find any of my apron dresses. Do you know where they are? And I'm like this. No. Yeah. <laughs> and then I look in my closet and I'm like, one, two, three. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like you're a garb oral. And here is my daughter in a dress that my sister made, gorgeous, with um, mistress, her excellent mistress, Heloise de Beck, who I believe you have coming up soon. I do. They're just they're just chatting, uh, and uh, I love that photo. And what we used to do when we would take uh, Sophia to events, we would all be kind of in different spots at the event. So if I was standing uh, over maybe five feet away, and Sophia started walking towards Chris, or, which is her Monday name, pardon me, Heloise, I would go, Heloise, zone. 
and Heloise would pick her up. And Heloise would say, Cortland, zone. As soon as <laughs> Sophia started, so we, we would like, suddenly she's in our zone. We're watching, we're watching. It, it was very effective. And I'm, I'm super lucky that my friends loved my kid and uh, were so gracious and, and wonderful with her. Yeah, it's, it's awesome because then she got this freedom, but she was still safely. Mm -hmm. oh, there were a lot of watchful eyes, yes, for sure. That's wonderful. For sure. Aha! That is, okay, I got to say her real SCA name. She's going to kill me. I know she's watching. Mistress Helchin, the rogue of Capua. Baroness. <laughs> this is my best friend. This is my partner in crime, wound tomb. We are 100% trouble, 100% shenanigans. She is a pelican. She is a fighter. She is the most golden hearted, generous, wonderful human. And we have so many bizarre similarities. And I love her so much. And uh, a lot of people know her because she is a, um, she fought in ACL uh, overseas and she fought, I get all the names confused. She's gonna be mad at me. She fought in like, what's it called? HMB? Battle of Nations? Yeah, that stuff. She I, was- I only know one. The very first woman to represent the USA. In that she is a complete badass, an Amazon, and I freaking love her. Wow. And I love her, love, love, love her. And this next picture is a picture of the two of us. And I believe we were at a squiring ceremony. And she obviously was getting a little misty. And I was thinking, it's quite cold. <laughs> Can we be done now? <laughs> I'm like, I'm quite cold. I'm quite cold. And, and she's like, oh, <laughs> which is pretty typical. And this next picture is not an SCA picture, but is my favorite SCA picture. And this is me and Rogue. And we are on our way to Gulf Wars. And one of my favorite things about the SCA is road trips. I love going to these events. And we, we're in Albuquerque. We just had a delicious breakfast at the elegant dining establishment that you see the sign behind you, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and we were feeling fine and happy and on our way. And we were, we were having a great time, having a great time. Now, the next three pictures can go fairly quick. They are all of me. And this is an example of why there are so few pictures of me. I want you to look at my expression in each one of these. these are not, there's nothing important that's happening in any of these pictures specifically. So picture one, look at my delighted face. You're taking my picture. I'm in a Bardic class that actually uh, um, um, Mistress Fiametta was teaching before she was a Laurel and I liked her class, but then somebody took my picture and I did not like that. Uh-oh, I can hear my family coming in. The next one is me in court. Don't take my picture. <laughs> and finally, the next one of me, um, I don't even know my picture's being taken, but that dress is fabulous. So I put it in these photos because look at how cute that is. <laughs> <laughs> and there I am with my buddy, Don Griff. And... Um, yeah, I, and I love that dress. My, my sister actually made that dress for her own laurel ceremony. She wore that for her laurel ceremony, but oh, who, who's wearing it now? Yeah, that's right. Cause it looks good on me, honey. <laughs> she, let me wear it. She, she let me wear it. And this finally is my household, St. Jude. And I haven't really mentioned them. Um, and this is St. Jude and extended family. Um, I can't even tell you how much I love these people, man. I love them so much. I miss them so much. I haven't seen anybody in so long because of this stupid COVID thing. 
And I look at their faces and I just want to go, mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you guys so much. And I see Dar and Carrie and Dave and Fish and Brad and of course Sir Kelwin and I call everybody by their regular names and kill me. And, and you know, I just, I could hug my sister for like a day and a half and just keep hugging her. And, and, and uh, everybody in the picture. And then of course, my little baby doll right up front, who is not a little baby doll anymore, but a grown woman, um, which freaks me out, but it's the truth. And um, so they're just, I'm just really, really lucky. And ultimately, my SCA story is that it started out as just me wanting free beer, going to a party with some friends that were in costumes, and it turned in my whole life. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do, I have a mundane life. You wouldn't know it by this fabulous background, but I do. <laughs> but it gave me my husband and my baby and my brother-in-law and my Lily and my best friend and all my other wonderful friends. I would never have had that. I'm sorry, I'm emo now. I'm crying too, thanks. Because I would never have had that. I, I would have had other stuff, but I had no, I don't, I love being a Laurel and I love helping and watching artists grow and watching what people can do. And I stand in constant amazement of people's skill and their expertise. But what I really love about the SCA, despite a lot of things that are wonky about the SCA, which is true, I love the people, man. I love the people. I, I'm so lucky. So, and I just can hardly wait to see everybody. I'm like, oh God, please let Australia happen. Please let Australia happen because I just want, I, I could make out with everybody, but not really, but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just, it, you know, this last year especially has taught me, don't take people for granted, man. Yeah. You never know. For sure, that's for sure. Nope. nope. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big boober. Just ignore me. I, I get. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to. Don't lose those lashes, girl. They look so good. Come on. Yeah, but <laughs> this one's kind of trying to creep off my eye. Uh -oh. <laughs> it feels like it's sticking <laughs> out. Ears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that it's going to be all like hello. <laughs> I bet they say that. I'm not lying. They look good. I can't see the comments, but I bet you can. <laughs> uh, nobody is commenting uh, except about my eyelashes, but they are saying that now we're all crying because. Oh. <laughs> but it's true. I'm, I, and we're at a point now where everybody's getting vaccinated and we really want to get back together. But oh, yeah. What's too soon and what really. It's so hard because we don't know really what is safe and what isn't and ugh. i mean my mother-in-law is here visiting that if you heard some sounds that was i sent them i was like i didn't need to eat you have to leave and go out dinner um so she's here visiting and she and my husband went out for dinner and um uh we've been very cautious about where we go because we're like mm, we're, you know we're, we're we try to be very careful um and I just, I don't even know what I'm going to do when I see my kid. You would never in a million years think, I, I would never in a million years think, I would go a year in my life while I walk this earth and not see my baby, ever. Yeah. And it, I miss her so much. And uh, along with my sister and, and oh my God, Lily. Uh, and I just, I just want to see everybody. But I want to also make sure they're safe. Yeah. The, the last thing I want to do is be like, yay, I'm here to see you. Oh, guess what? I just killed you. <laughs> you know? Right. 
right. so. Yeah, same, same. I've been about this long, I can do it, I'm strong. <clears throat> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all hurting a little bit too. <laughs> nobody's nobody's unscarred from this yeah we'll be talking about it like i remember when i survived the great pandemic of 2020. <laughs> i hope that's what we say right yeah i hope so too i hope so too so um how do you see starting back going how do you what do you what do you envision that looking like do you have any concept or is it just like you're gonna um, people. I am happy to wait until Estrella and see if Estrella actually happens. I don't know for sure if it will. Right. I hope it does, but I want them to make the right decision and to do what's best. And I think they've been handling it really, really well so far. I'm proud of Aidenville, my old, my old home, you know, and uh, I think that they've been doing a good job. And so if they decide to to do it, I'm I'm there, and I'll still be careful. But I'm vaccinated. I've been vaccinated for a few weeks now, so I am I am fully protected as far as the vaccine can offer. And um, I think that by November, when Australia rolls around, we should know a lot more. Yeah, and I would take that into consideration. Um. I'm nervous about singing in public. Yeah. Um, I will not share a microphone with anyone. And I don't know how long it'll be before I feel like I can do that without uh, spraying it down with half a, out half a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. Um, or how I feel about singing in front of people without like something in front of me. Right. If I were to be asymptomatic somehow and carry it, I know they're saying that people that have the vaccine can't pass it on. And I hope that proves to be true. That would be amazing. But I, I wouldn't take that chance. Right. I, I couldn't, I can handle it if I, if like, I have to sing and, oh, I'm so sorry your grandma died. I don't think so, man. Not me. Yes. So uh, I, I am, I am moving forward with caution. And I'm, I'm kind of a wait and see, but I feel good. I think, I think things seem to be moving in the right direction. So I'm hoping October, November, December, maybe things will start feeling like, I don't know, it would be great if I could like go to a bar and just dance for five hours. Cause I really want to go dancing, man. I really want to go dancing. It would be great if I could show up at an event and sing for three hours and, but I will never share a bottle with anybody again. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. I've stocked up. So yeah, like, mm, here's some meat I made. Mm -mm. Thank you. It looks delicious. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how our, um, some of our really strong traditions change. I think that we'll get the swing of it though. I think it's just gonna take some time for us to get used to it. And I think that there are some people and I'm, I'm not being disparaging. I know that everybody has dealt with this in the best way they can. And I know some people don't give it the same validity I do and that's fine. That's you do you babe. Yeah. But uh, regardless of, of however you roll with this, it's impacted you. And um, I know that some people would like to just say, let's just go back to everything we did before. And then there are people that are away and I tend towards to be the no way people. <laughs> I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm. And, you know, I, I mean, so, so I wanna be safe. I want to be careful. I want to keep other people protected. I want more science. I want more information. And that will help me moving forward to play. I love all the online stuff. Everything that you and your sister and your affiliates have been doing has been amazing and keeps such good company. And I've learned so much about other laurels from other kingdoms. 
And there are some, I'm stalking you, you don't know it, but I am, that I really want to make friends with. I, I, am, I am hunting Carl's. I've only met him on Facebook and I'm like, no, we're going to be friends. You're going to love me. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, this has been such an amazing journey to, and such an honor to be able to talk to so many people and meet so many people. You know, a lot of my SCA existence over the past 18 years has been me and the kids in the tent. <laughs> oh, sure. when, when they're little, yeah. You know, and uh, that has uh, been hard to make connections and, and to network and, um, all of these interviews have been a huge gift for me and have changed things for the better in a lot of ways for me. So I'm very thankful. A whole different SCA universe. And I love to go back if I've missed some to watch them. And uh, I've learned a lot about a lot, a lot of different people in places that it, this whole thing, one really positive about COVID and the pandemic, I have met so many people from kingdoms that I've never gotten to go to, or maybe I've just only been to Penzik or, you know, some other big event, but I've gotten to take classes from people and, and actually talk to them and get to know them a little bit. And I'm like, no, I really like you. And I really respect you. And I want to hear more about what you have to say. And I, I love that part of all of this. I think it's, I think it's been really good for all of us. And I think that uh, if, if people in the SCA could hand out a little medal of honor, you, you, you and your sister should have it. For real. Like this. We, we've gotten, we've gotten two. Well, yeah. three. <laughs> so just for you too. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. That's, that's really sweet. I, I actually feel kind of sad. Uh, for some of the people who uh, have just noped out of any online interaction because there have been so many amazing classes and there are hundreds and hundreds of people doing such good work. Um, you know, I think about Thea and how many courts she's running for Artemisia and how hard she's working. It's astounding. Oh, girl. I mean, and, 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 and certainly she's not alone. There's people all over in every kingdom that, that are doing these things. And I love that they want to keep the SCA alive. I love that they are trying to get people organized and connected. And my hope is that when all of this washes out and we can start going to events and stuff, I hope that we'll all be able to travel a little more despite the expense. I know it's expensive. Um, and I hope that we'll be able to connect more. I would love to see more inner kingdom uh, teaching and instructional events. I hope that this online stuff doesn't come to a screeching halt. Yeah. Um, I realize it's a lot of effort for people, but I think, I think it's been good for the SCA. Yeah. And I think it's raised the level of, uh, I can just tell you as a new person that started out as a complete like schlub, right? Had I started out and then had all this online stuff, holy smokes, I can't even, what a gift. Yeah. And, and I just, uh, I'm hoping that a lot of this online stuff too will reach out to people in the steampunk community and the cosplay community and say, hey, come and look at the SCA. This might be your jam. You might really like this. Come here. Check us out. Shut. <laughs> Shut. You know, like, and, and, you know, not everybody has to be perfectly period. I like perfectly period. I think it's fabulous, but I'm just saying, don't feel pressure. Just come on. There's plenty of people who apply pressure, but there's plenty of us that are fun. You can do both. And, and fun is the most important thing. Um, if it's totally your jam and it's super fun for you to do everything strictly period, and that's what makes that's what makes your heart happy, 
sure I love that. If you're not into that at all and you just want to run around in a tea tunic and tent, you know, to camp in a tent, awesome. Do that. When when I first started playing, there was one person aside from uh, uh, Brian and Donna, who I should say Brian and Anna Tarragon, who had like what they called Club Eight and Belt, this massive tent thing, which you must have seen if you were at Thirty Year. Um, which was, by the way, my favorite singing moment in the SCA occurred at that event in that tent, for sure. And it wasn't period at all. And um, uh, and that was uh, Baron Eddie from uh, the Barony of 1000 Eyes. And he would put his tent up at Uprising. And it was just, it wasn't like this huge tent. It was, it was around, it was a nice tent. Everyone would revolve around this one tent. It was like, it was like the center of the clock because everybody was sleeping in like, you know, Coleman tents that they got at yard sales that were 20 years old and kind of scary, but we slept in them and, and, and that kind of stuff because we didn't have any money. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't need to have all the stuff mm -hmm. that, that comes with time. And, and with you going, this is the stuff I want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even if you've been playing 15 years, you don't have to have this stuff. Only no, you, if it brings you joy. Right. I need a lot of stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm watching a lot of people in our kingdom switch over to RV camping. Okay. I have a pavilion. But I also have a tiny RV. It's a 1978 Tioga. It looks exactly like the Brady Bunch on the inside, and it is perfect. Like the person that we got it from kept it pristine, one owner. It's all like avocado green and harvest gold. And I feel like I'm 12 years old and I'm like, I love it in here. But it has its own bathroom and its own shower. It has its own kitchen. It has a really good air conditioner and a heater. I call it the Bandit in honor, of course, of the great film Smokey and the Bandit. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'll go to an event and set up my pavilion and put like my my benches and we have these gorgeous chairs that we worked on and everything. And we can sit in there and be like, noise, noise. <laughs> Just my sip, mm, noise, noise. But my fanny is going back to my RV and I turn on the air conditioning and I take off my chemise and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I have my own bathroom and shower. No more porter potties in the middle of the night. No more. I'm done. I'm 56, man. I've earned it. Yeah, I've earned it. So there are some certain dupes from a certain kingdom called the Outlands that should understand that some people don't ever want to go to the porta potty after them. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to name names, though. <laughs> you know who you are. I know who you. Are. I have my own bathroom. Go, go ahead. Enjoy yourselves. That's not me. <laughs> I probably, that's, that's where I should look at the sign I put on my desk that says, don't say too much and don't swear. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. shouldn't have mentioned that. It, I, it's great. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Well, is there anything that you wanted to talk about this evening that we have not covered? You know, I could talk to you all night because I like talking with you, but I think, I think I've probably, you know, talked so much people are like, oh my God, when is she going to stop? Never. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think rewind back to we miss everybody and it's so awesome to see your face. I totally feel like that. And, and hear that noise. Something, yeah. Oh God. Oh. Guess who, guess who just messaged me? 
your sister. Sister? She said, don't forget to mention, and she's right. I forgot to mention a super important event that uh, I, I don't know if this first time we met in person, but Sir Kelwin's knighting. Yes. And um, for me, because I'd been living, uh, so I do want to talk about one more thing. So excellent. And, um, so uh, I uh, I had moved out of kingdom and I, I knew that uh, uh, Mistress Sarah was going to be getting her laurel at Raptor War. And I knew that Sir Kelwin was going to be knighted at Raptor War. And uh, so I flew home for it. And um, Kelwin uh, very graciously asked me if I would sing for her ceremony. So I contacted uh, the amazingly talented uh, Mistress Windrith from North Shield and asked her permission to sing Savage Daughter. By the way, that thing is viral on TikTok. 800 million teenagers, they're singing it. And that's Windrith's song. So give her some props. Give her her props. She earned it. She wrote it. She sings it. It's her song. Anyway, end of that. Yay. Um, so she allowed me to sing it for uh, Kellen's Nighting. And I forget who, it wasn't my idea. I want to say it was my sister's idea, but maybe it was somebody else's. I wish I could remember whose idea it was. Anyway, we were all talking about this ceremony and she'd asked certain people to say things. And someone came up with the idea that uh, we should start singing the song. I would start out singing because she was expecting me to sing. I wasn't as <laughs> I, I, I think it was my sister's idea. Did you just hear that ding? I think I heard it. What a shocker. I can hear, you know, everyone online can hear it every time you message me, Cortland. <laughs> so. <laughs> so stop it. So anyways, <laughs> I love my sister so much. But yes, she does talk to me a lot. And um, so uh, anyway, we decided that uh, during the verses, different women who are all close with Kellen and know Kellen would get up and start singing. And it, it, it was one of the coolest SCA moments I've ever had. It was an honor um, because uh, she was the, the first woman to be made a knight in the kingdom of Artemisia. Sir Leia Dispenser, already a knight in Artemisia and a goddess. Stop. But Kellen was the first one to be made a knight in Artemisia proper as a kingdom itself. And so I think that um, it was a real pivotal moment for a lot of women uh, in our kingdom, a lot of women that, that are close with Kellen. We saw Kellen's relentless determination and just, man, hard work. And she would not give up, never give up, boy. Everybody want anybody on your side. You want Kellen on your side. For decades. I mean, yeah. and, uh, so all of, of uh, these people decided to get up and sing. And it just turned out to be this. I had no idea how it would turn out. But at the end, when all of the women basically that were there we're all singing. It just felt like this, like, I felt like, zoom, oh, mighty Isis. I was super empowered. I was like, oh, and, and, and it was just, and, and seeing her face, it just felt like I was, I was so happy that it made her happy. And 
that it touched her, but it also felt like we were all saying, yeah, we're here. Yeah, from, from an outsider's uh, point of view, um, it was one of the most magical moments I've ever had in the SCA because here you have this kingdom. Um, I, and I've known Kellen for a really long time um, and I've watched her work really hard for a really long time as well. Um, but it was like every woman at that event said, we see you, we have walked this path with you, we support you and we are here for you. Yeah. And, um, you know, your nighting is for all of us too. It was just so moving. It was so incredible. I to be part of it. And I was so honored that Mr. Flindreth allowed us to use her piece of music because I felt like that was a completely powerful thing in that moment and fitting. And it, 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 it was, it was one of the, the best SCA moments I've ever had too. It was very powerful. I felt like somebody had plugged me into a socket at the end of it. I was just electrified, you know, I just, you know, it just, and I was so happy that Kellen was happy. Yeah. yeah. He sent me a, a big picture. Um, uh, of of me singing and everything, and I have it on my wall. Actually, I love it. I love it. It was so sweet. One day I opened the mail, and here's this picture. I was like, "She's got. She's she's a wonderful person. She's wonderful." So, I'm so, like I said before, I am so lucky with the people that I have met in the SCA, and the people who are close to me. My household, St. Jude. My girlfriend's in New Orleans. I have a couple of Katie's that I'm crazy about. And uh, I just, I've been really, really lucky. The SCA has been a really good roll of the dice for me. And uh, yeah, I owe it a lot. All I have to do is look at a picture of my gorgeous kid. And I'm like, if I wouldn't have seen that, dude step out of that van <laughs> I would not have her yeah I, I, I have yeah. a very similar I'm just saying <laughs> I have a very similar story I uh we were shopping in Seattle uh we were up in 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 Seattle for uh well I lived there but a bunch of people up in Seattle for Ursulness and um I saw this shiny blonde boy across the, the store with a bunch of friends of mine. And I was like, oh, who's that? <laughs> and he was married. So I was like, oh. but then he got divorced. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> You've so, been with me and you didn't know. It. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, same. Uh, both my sister and I met our husbands in the SCA, much like much like you and your sister did. And look at your beautiful kids. They're amazing. Yeah. Also redheads, I might add. I know. <laughs> Perfect people. <laughs> <laughs> my whole family, my husband, red hair. I have red hair. My sister, my kid. And my sister says that Lily's hair is more auburn or even dark brown. And I'm like, no, it's red. Let me be clear. You're wrong. I'm right. I'm the older sister. I am the right one. <laughs> Redhead. Let it. It's. I've said it on the internet, and that's made it true. <laughs> Is that going to be your mic drop moment? <laughs> no. You'll still argue it with me. But I will say this, and this is true. Lily has the most gorgeous hair of anyone in the family. And that's saying a lot because Sophie has great hair. But Lily, Lily's hair is like almost down to her knees. It's crazy. Wow. My sister's a, a hair wizard. So she makes it all like, but I, I, can't, I can't even braid. I pull it into a ponytail and I'm like. <laughs> I rocked it. <laughs> yeah. Some other stuff to my hair though. So I'm, go I'm going in on some, a lot of colors. So, but I didn't want to do it before the interview because I was afraid I would have bright purple bangs and that could be bad with garb. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Well, but I, I think a lot of people do it now, so I think it's fine. I think you do you, right? I think my brows, I haven't had my brows waxed since COVID, so don't come for me. <laughs> I, know. I know. Okay? I know. The same. I just wanted to be clear about that because your brows look good. Thanks. I, 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 I do them myself. <laughs> I can't because I'm a baby about pain. Uh, Not going to happen. I have to go in and they just have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but right now I have kind of the Groucho Marx eyebrows. <laughs> I think you look beautiful. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Though. But you're gorge and those eyelashes, everything. I didn't rip them off. I made it through the interview. Good. I'm going to sing, but we'll just have to sing the next time we see each other, man. That would be awesome. Get together and we'll sing around a fire, and that's where it should happen anyway. True facts. Well, thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I really appreciate it, and this was a, a lot of fun. So kind of you, and I, I'm so glad I got to be a part of this whole thing. I know I was all like nervous, Nelly, but this has been super cool although i should say nervous kelly but you know <laughs> <laughs> well thank you and um thanks everyone for watching and for um hanging out in the comments and uh we'll see you tomorrow um rifkin and i are interviewing um Isolt from the summit who uh is a pelican and a laurel and um is responsible uh, she's the brainchild behind all of the amazing stained glass um fake stained glass that we put up in hotels at cloth nights uh, oh, she's that sounds super cool it's astounding she's done um like life-size bigger than life-size drawings of uh yeah. d different pillars of the kingdom and it's amazing so what she's done i would like to see that that sounds cool lots of slides tomorrow so we'll get to look at all of it <laughs> Watch the sisters, everybody. Watch them. Thanks for having me. You're wonderful. Thank you again. Good night. Bye.